Right. So today we're going to be looking at what graphs of tangent and all the reciprocal functions look like. Um, it's important that you know a couple things. Where tangent is undefined. This is going to play an important part of how you guys see your picture. So anybody know um, what makes something undefined? Is it over zero? Good. So like when we had maybe like something over zero. Right. Now tangent was the sine over the cosine, right? So if you guys think about your ordered pairs, here's one, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, zero, negative one. Okay. Where would we have issues where tangent would be undefined? Ninety and two seventy. Good job, Carly. The ninety and the two seventy. If we try in our calculators to figure out Okay. Um, I'm going to make sure I'm in degree right now just because I'm like actually solving something. I'm not graphing right now. So if I try to do the tangent of 90, ooh, we get an error, right? That's because it's undefined there. Same thing if I try to do the tangent of 270. Oh, goodness. Not that. Okay. Same thing. We get an error. So can it's undefined at certain spots, right? And Julie, I love what you said. Where the bottom would have been zero from our unit circle and the ordered pairs. So this is going to be pretty important. That it's undefined at 90 and 270. What about like negative 90? Let's try it. I think negative 90. Oh yeah, it's good, Carly. I love the connection there. She said, well, is it just negative 90 the same thing as 270? Yeah. You get an error there too, so it's not defined at negative 90 either. Um, how do we rewrite? This is a good little review too. Does anybody remember how do we rewrite secant? Cosine. Guys, this one's one over nine. You could do one over ten. Good. Perfect. Good job. All this stuff is going to be important when we actually just learn to type them in our pictures. So a couple things with the tangent curve. So as we are going to be graphing, this is the only time we need to be radians. So we're going to look at what the picture of the tangent looks like. So in your calculators, right, make sure you change our mode to radian. Okay. Right, we're going to go to our y equals. What I'm going to have you guys type in is graph this, y equals tan x. So it's a basic tangent graph. And uh, all right. So we're gonna graph that. If you guys are gonna do, if your graph looks a little odd, do zoom seven. Remember that zoom trick? We'll make it all night. That's for cosine. One over ten. Okay, so like right here, we're just going to graph tangent, so just graph regular y equals 10x. Regular tangent. Um, radius. Okay, so this, we should have something that looks very similar to this. Now, depending on your calculator, some of you guys might have like a weird connecting line. Does anybody have this? Okay, that's fine. It just depends. Okay, is this your, you guys have yeah. 83? I think it's the model, right? Which is fine, not not an issue at all. Okay, we're going to talk about what those lines that you guys see are, and you guys don't have them. Okay, this is fine. All right, so with the tangent curve, right, it looks like this crazy little, I don't know, like a swiggle, right, the whole time. Um, if you look at your graph, what do you guys think this goes up to? Like, what do you think amplitude would be here? Infinity. infinity. Good job. It never stops. Good job. So the amplitude here is just going to be infinity. It never stops. It's going to, if you guys had a massive graph, it's going to keep going on and on and on forever. Okay. Now, the period is a little bit tough here because we can't use our 2 pi over b for me. You actually have to think about what the period means. Um, does anybody know what the period, the definition is? Uh, close. Alright. It's the length of time. Good job. 
to P, one whole curve. So this is pretty tough, right? If we look at our calculator, a tangent curve, each one of these is a tangent curve. Okay, that is one full curve. So when we look at the special little class in here, this was your zero. Do you guys remember what this one is? Pi over two. Perfect. Good job. Now same thing with the other direction. This is your negative pi over two, negative pi, negative three pi over two, and then the negative two pi. Great. Now in here we have to be very careful. You guys can think about it if you need to like a degree if you want. Um, and then make it into a radius. Um, when we look between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, how many actually degrees is between here and here? Take a second, please. All right, from here to here is 90. What about from here to here? That's 90. Okay, so together, good, 180. There's 180 degrees, right? We'll make one full curve. Look at this one, too. Right? If this is 270 and this one is 90, what's the difference? How long would it be between here? 180. Right? Same thing on this side. Between negative 90 and negative 270, there's also 180 degrees in there. Right? Um, since we're dealing with turn graphs, we don't really like using degrees. So what do you mean to pi? Yeah, Carly, perfect. Do you guys remember that 180 is really just pi? Okay, so for you guys to see one full tangent curve, it's going to take pi units, or just pi, right, or 180 degrees. That's how long it takes to see one full tangent curve. Um, now, you guys told me in the very beginning where tangent has some issues, right, where it's undefined. You guys said at 90 and 270, right? What I want you to look at in your calculator, and those of you guys who have um, who have those lines drawn, kind of look at what goes on at the 90 and the 270. Do you guys have anything that like can your picture work there? Can it touch that green line? No. You guys have these empty spaces, most of you, unless you have an 83. Okay. You guys have something that looks like this. The reason why tangent, we don't have anything at this 90 degree or pi over 2 is. Same thing with the 270 or that 3 pi over 2. Anybody know why? Because it's undefined. It can't work there. right? We just tried it in the very beginning of our lesson. Right? When I had you guys type that in, you got those errors. So our graph can't work where there's errors. It can't touch there. Um, does anybody remember back from exponents? Um, a like invisible kind of line that your graph can't draw. What that's called? An asymptote. Yay! Good job. Did I write it on here? Did you write it? Oh, I did. I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. The those like invisible lines that you guys see, or some of you guys do see, those are called yeah. asymptotes. All right. It's where the graph is undefined, where it can't exist. All right. So that's why either you see those connections in your calculator or you just see the breaks in the tangent. It just can't happen there. Do you guys understand why it can't happen there? Because right, you would have a zero in the bottom from your ordered pair if you actually evaluated it. That's the hardest thing that we're going to talk about today. All right, the rest of this is pretty easy. Um, if you guys get any tangent questions on your Regents exam, it's usually graphing and matching to a picture or this was the hardest tangent question that I found. Okay, second. Okay, I just want to go over like, the wording because it's a little bit tricky. So it says, which value of x is not in the domain of the function y equals tan x? Does anybody know what the domain means? It's the x value. Good. So what that means is when we look at our picture, okay, and you look left to right, right? Look, that's what domain was, the x. Which one cannot happen? So think about what happens in this. They want to know which one of these values cannot be in our graph. 
well, I don't know, something weird. Um, so this is going to be what your graph should always look like for COSI camp. Now, um, things that happen at COSI camp, which is kind of cool. All right. We do have, what do you guys think is happening at these spots? Oh, they're asymptotes. Very nice. We can't, we can't evaluate right here. Right. So when you guys see the breaks in the graphs like this, it's because it couldn't exist. There's got to be some kind of an asymptote going on. Um, one thing to make sure, especially when you're matching pictures to graphs, look at the zero part. Does this graph ever cross zero? No. Okay. Keep that in mind for a second. Um, okay. Are you going to do C camp? Okay. Same thing, we don't have a C camp button to graph. Um, we're going to have to use 1 over the cos. Right? So let's graph this 1 over the cos x. And that will be what your C camp looks like. All right, so this is kind of cool. Um, when you guys are doing your C camp, right? Doesn't it look very similar? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The only thing that's going to be different though is where we have our asymptote. Okay, and where it crosses. Um, Matt, do you need one asymptote here? Where is the spot that this can't work? Three. Um, high over two. Good. At the 90. Alright, there's an asymptote. We've got another one, Katie. Very nice. 3 pi over 2. Very good. Right, same thing in the negative direction. Negative pi over 2 is going to be an asymptote. Same thing at negative. 3 pi over 2. Good. Okay. So, with this, guys, what you want to do if you're matching pictures, just be careful. You're really paying attention. Does this one cross? Does it happen at zero? Yeah, right, that's the difference. This one can happen at zero, the other one can't. So when you're matching your pictures, just like watch out that you're like looking at it closely. Um, Ad asked me about what the, I have in your picture here. Like what does this squiggle line represent? Well, something kind of cool happens with secant. And if you look at, if you graph cosine, they touch at these special spots. So here's your secant curve, right? Get rid of all this, you guys can see. Secant is really made up of one over the cosine. So this is why it hits in the spot that it does. If I graph just cos x, we would start this at one, okay? And what would happen is it would go down this, it would look something like this. Here's your full cosine curve. Right? If you went the other direction, same thing. Right? So see how it touches the same spot as where the cosine. Yes. Well, this is what cosine would be. I just wanted to show you guys that. Like the secant, since the secant is made up of cosine, they would hit at these special spots if you grab both of them. That's kind of like why. Yeah, if you did it on your calculator. Okay, with sign, exactly. Right. Just something just something fun for you guys to know. Okay. But the big thing is literally just matching up graphs. Alright. So a couple things. Um just to finish quick reminder. Right. Your C R twelve is due on Friday, right? I'm going to give you guys like a five minute quiz on amplitude, period, and frequency. Make sure you guys know the period formula. Just for cosine. Just cosine and cosine. Okay. And how to match a graph to an equation. Right. Very general, not a tricky one. Okay. Just a very general thing.